and I'm slowly making you all co-hosts. There's like 13 of y'all, so give me a quick second. You have to do them all individually. I want to. Can I do it all at once? No, I had to do it all individually too. That is frustrating. So, okay, here we go. And as you're becoming co-host, if you can just put your cameras on, and we can, I can, helps me differentiate when we still need to, need to co-host. So really quick, um, while we're doing that, I just wanted to remind you all that you have um, 15 minutes max, and I um, hope I don't need to cut you off. So if you can be really mindful with your team about that time limit. Um, you will have the ability now that you're all co-hosts to share your screen. So if someone on your team is, is sharing a presentation and while you're not speaking, it's really, all right, I think we're ready. Welcome. It is great to be here today. Uh, good afternoon. This presentation is the emerging researchers from students in ARCS. My name is Chantel Russell. I use she, her pronouns. On campus, I'm the Associate Director of Physical Education and I'm the Director of the inaugural Thrive Healthy Communities ARC, which is uh, a couple of the presentations in here today. And I'm just really excited to hear about the work of these first year students and uh, how it's associated with their year long experience in the academic residential community. It's also been a very unique experience residing and, and learning on campus this year. So these students are uh, really resilient and have some good work to share. Just before we get started, I just want to go over the format. We do have four groups that will leading, be leading presentations ranging from 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and we will conclude our entire uh, session with a Q&A. So uh, I'll let each group introduce themselves. They will present. We'll transition between each of those groups. Um, but feel free to answer or enter any questions into the chat throughout the presentation. The, the group may be able to answer it when they're done presenting or we'll use those again at the end. And without further ado, I will turn it over to our first group, uh, which is the presentation is ecological design, designing a pollinator supportive native garden on campus. We're just pulling up our slides. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, great. We're five students from the Environmental Leaders Academic Residential Community or ARC and our research has centered on compiling and executing a comprehensive plan for a pollinator supportive garden on the University of Oregon campus. Our talk will move into a project overview by Hannah, research by Caroline, our project plan by Isabel and Alyssa, project impacts by me, garden implementation by Alyssa, and then our conclusion by me. So to establish some vocabulary we use frequently in this talk, a bee-friendly area, which is also called the pollinator pocket, is a habitat which supports pollinators by offering them a space to build hives, collect nectar, wash off in water, or rest as they move between other pollinator habitats. On the right is UO's campus map of pollinator supportive areas with our garden's location circled in red. And as we'll elaborate upon later, the location of our garden forms an ecological corridor, which facilitates bees and other pollinators to move between pollinator supportive areas on and off campus, such as the urban farm and Mackenzie River. And with that, I'll hand off to Hannah. All right, so first we wanted to talk a little bit about why our project matters and why it is important. Um, to start us off more than, 85% um, of the world's flowering plants rely on pollinators, including more than two thirds of the world's crop species. So this means that flowering plants are 
plant species only produce seeds if animal pollinators move pollen from the anthers to the stigmas of their flowers. So without this service, many species and their processes within an ecosystem would collapse. Um, taking it back a step and looking at the decline in bee population specifically, um, climate change is an overarching reason for this decline. However, this is due to changes in crops growing seasons as well as um, pollination seasons. Um, some specific reasons behind climate change um, and some other specific reasons in include the introduction of parasites and diseases such as mites that infect honeybee colonies, the use of harmful pesticides used in home gardens and agriculture, as well as habitat fragmentation due to urbanization, agriculture, and resource extraction. So some of the ways to mitigate these issues and the benefits of our pollinator pocket is on a broader scope, it will increase biodiversity because of um, we are planting native plant species as well as reducing the use of pesticides because these plant species are um, um, adapted to the environment as well as um, support for bee populations through um, world food and crop production because we're providing a new habitat. But on a nail scale, looking at the campus specifically, it provides visual appeal with our native flowering plants. It will require less water use on campus, once again, because these are native species, and then they will provide education about bee populations, um, which is what we are trying to do on campus. So now I'll hand it over to Caroline to talk about the research behind our project. Okay, and like Hannah said, I will be talking about the research that went into our project. So starting off with plant selection, we had to make sure that the plants we chose would be able to survive in our garden. So for sun requirements, we didn't wanna choose plants that needed full sun for a shady plot and vice versa. We also wanted to have different bloom times and plants with different heights to make our garden both beautiful and beneficial to our pollinators. Finally, we wanted to choose plants that would live longer. So by longevity, we mean annual versus perennial as we would not want to have to replace the plants every year. Once we had decided that we wanted to design a pollinator pocket for our project, we were given two potential plots for our garden. For option one, it was mostly sunny and was in a spot where lots of people would be able to see it. Um, however, the problem with this plot was that it already had plants, which means that we'd have to remove them in, to plant our garden, which seemed counterintuitive. The other problem with this plot was that it was at a slant, meaning our group wouldn't be able to implement a human component, which is something that we really wanted to do. For option two, it was mostly shaded, only getting sun in the morning, and it was somewhat secluded, but this plot was empty, meaning our group would have a clean slate to start planting our garden, and because it's flat, incorporating a human component would be possible. In the end, our group decided to go with option two, which is the mill race plot. These are some of the pictures that I took of the plot in order to give you an idea of what it looked like before the planting, along with the diagram of the location of the plot. So for plot details, I measured the area and collected information about it so that it would help Alyssa and Isabella make a more accurate visual design of our pollinator pocket, which you will see later in the presentation. Um, in the diagram on the right, the dark gray squares in the corners are lampposts and the green rectangles are underground sprinkler valves. And with the plot being irrigated, it will make maintenance and upkeep of the plot easier, which is another reason why we ended up choosing the millrace plot. And with that, I will pass it off to Alyssa and Isabella. So our team's comprehensive pocket pollinator plan includes a visual design, human components, and a plan for both the cost and maintenance of our garden. So this is the visual design for our pocket pollinator that was designed by both Isabella and I. It serves as a comprehensive diagram that shows the size and placement of the various plants that we included. We placed the larger plants along the back of the plot to ensure that all the plants would be visible to people walking by the garden and plants of similar type are all clumped together to promote their survival. Our design also includes a bench for students to enjoy the garden, which Isabella will talk more about on our next slide. As Lelissa stated, we decided to add a bench so people can really be integrated into our garden and really get a feel of why we have this garden set up and get a feel for why it's so important to have bees. Another great part about having a bench in this area is that it's near the river, so meaning people walking by can join our garden and enjoy themselves. And it's also at the Milroy Studios, which are art studios, so that means art students can really enjoy themselves during this time.
Another thing that we're going to try to implement is plant labels, which will help people walking by and who go into our garden know which plants we planted, as they're all native plants and they're very important for people to know which native plants we have are in Oregon. As well, this will help um, maintenance people when they come to take care of our garden, uh, which plants are indeed weeds and which plants are implemented and are supposed to be in that garden. And handing it back to Alyssa to talk about our payment. So this is the list of prices that takes into account how many plants need to be purchased based on the size of our plot. Um, all of the prices are based on the Doat Creek native plant nursery here in Eugene. And the estimated quantity of each plant species is based on our visual design that we showed earlier in the presentation. Um, although this price isn't concrete, we estimated the price to be somewhere around $412. And I'll hand it back to Isabella to talk about our maintenance plan. Right. Uh, the biggest thing that about our garden that we were focused on at first was our maintenance. As Caroline stated previously, irrigation was a big part of whether or not our garden would survive, especially its first year. As previously stated, all our plants in our garden are native and they need a good watering the first summer for them to be really implemented and survive the previous summers for the next summers ahead. Another thing that was very important to us was the campus landscapers to be able to to upkeep our garden and make it beautiful and enjoyable. Another large part that we really wanted to happen is future environmental leaders who join the ARC will be able to enjoy and help with the upkeep of our garden, such as pruning and keeping, making sure the bench and path are clean. So people want to, would want to come in and enjoy our garden and handing it to Kelly. Cool, okay, so moving into project impacts as, um, can you change the slide? <laughs> um, as Hannah described earlier, our project seeks to promote both pollinator health and greater human engagement with pollinator conservation issues. So our garden supports pollinators via increasing available flower resources, as well as creating an ecological corridor between pollinator habitat on and off campus, as we mentioned earlier. And um, as has been well established, our garden also uses native plants. Um, which both grow better here and better support pollinators. One example of how they better support pollinators is that um, bees and other pollinators are typically able to extract more nectar from native plants as compared to non-native plants because pollinators are adapted to those native plants. Additionally, our pollinator pocket increases human awareness of pollinator conservation issues through continu like continuous human interaction with our garden and its materials which includes signage and education materials adding our garden to the UO's map of pollinator friendly areas um, garden, like plant labels in our garden, as well as future arc engagement, which Alyssa is going to describe in the next section. Uh, um, as you can see, our project was originally aimed at just creating a comprehensive plan for a pollinator garden. But fortunately, this spring, we were able to move forward with our project and work towards actually planting our garden. So our team, along with several other students from the Environmental Leaders Arc, worked with UO's landscaping team to successfully plant our garden. And now that our garden plan has been implemented, it constitutes as a UO certified bee-friendly garden, and we will be able to add it to the UO campus map of pollinator-friendly spaces that we showed at the beginning of our presentation. In the future, we really hope to promote education and engagement with other arts at the university by including other students in our design, education, and outreach efforts. In the long run, we really want our pollinator garden, in addition to the other pollinator spots on campus, to, serves at, to serve as means of sustainability and environmentalism outreach in the Eugene area. And I will pass it to Kelby to conclude our presentation. Okay, so in conclusion, our garden and the human pollinator interaction, it facilitates, illuminates pollinators' importance and works towards recognizing and protecting their critical ecological role. By designing a garden which integrates pollinators and people, educational materials showing pollinators' cruciality to human health, and frameworks for future art cohorts to continue this project in collaborative and interdisciplinary ways, our project and garden function as an entry point for conversations around pollinator conservation among UO students, faculty, and staff. Our team would like to thank Peg and Jane Brubaker, a landscape designer for UO's campus planning and facilities management for advising our project and for providing campus and garden resources, as well as UO's Be Friendly Campus Initiative and Salix Associates for providing resources on pollinators. 
Thank you all for your time. Thank you to the Undergraduate Research Symposium for giving us this opportunity. And we're really excited to answer any questions that you all have. Thank you. Our next presentation will be Physical Education and Recreation Student Incentive Program to Increase Well-Being. Hello, everybody. My name is Jen Perneski, and today I'll be presenting with my group members, Joey, Bella, and Tristan. We're all first year students here in the Thrive Arc, which focuses on the eight dimensions of wellness. And today we will be introducing our incentive program through the Recreation Center called Breadcrumbs Future Flight. Apologies, I'm so sorry. Um, throughout the slides, we'll be going uh, and the first slide will tell you a bit about who we are um, as a group. Um, unfortunately, one of our members is not able to be here right now, um, but I will be speaking on their behalf. Um, uh, then we'll go into the logistics, how we plan to, um, or research that we've taken to figure out how we're going. I'm, I'm so sorry. I need a second. Okay, so as students who are in an arc focused on well being, we want to focus on the correlation between physical and mental health. And we know that the Rec Center is a great resource that off that's offered to all students here on campus, but what can they do to improve everyone's well being? So we decided to explore the question of what can the University of Oregon's Recreation Center do to improve the well-being of incoming freshmen who indicate low well-being scores through the student initiative surveys taken at the beginning of the year. Um, so incoming freshmen complete the student well-being success initiative survey, and it can indicate the uh, well-being levels of students here on campus, and some of the students score low well-being. And so the rec center wants to explore how they can make a positive four years and set these students up for success in the future that they're here at the University of Oregon. And so data shows that students who take PE classes through the rec center are more likely to have more, uh, four more enjoyable years here at Oregon. And then also uh, the rec center offers intramural sports and data shows that the four year graduation rate is 19 higher, points higher on average among undergrads who participate in these intramurals. Um, so for our program our, um, in bre with breadcrumbs, we aim to uh, better the wellness of our, uh, of all of our students at UO um, through rewards connected to the UO Rec Center. Um, uh, it is directed at freshmen, but it's inclusive of all graduating classes. Uh, we propose the integration of a system for students to earn uh, bread a, uh, 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 points at the rec so that they can scan in each time. Sorry, next slide. Um, uh, the, uh, the goal of our system is to build better uh, wellness habits for our students because I know that um, we know that getting your physical education or physical activity in is uh, not the top priority sometimes. Um, it's part of constructing good habits. Uh, um, uh, that lead to positive reinforcements such as having goals and incentives like the ones discussed uh, to be discussed. Uh, uh, students will get points called crumbs automatically. Um, every time uh, uh, they swipe their cards, they scan in their cards at the rec center or if they go through the app. 
which will also connect them to uh, the rewards points. Um, if they participate consistently, uh, a multiplier will build and they'll be able to use those points that they gather to spend um, on Merch in the Duck Store. We plan to uh, uh, communicate with them. Um, we also want to add uh, uh, badges so that um, people have goals to work for rather, rather than just um, discounts, um, high fives. So like be able to give like kudos in the Strava system, uh, a, a, well, a popular running app um, to encourage your friends uh, who are also going to the rec and um, daily affirmations uh, like uh, positive reminders that um, the day is going to be okay. Next slide, please. Um, after an interview that uh, one of our group members had with uh, Professor uh, David McCormick here at UO, um, we discussed the elements of, uh, or some elements of this successful incentive program. Um, uh, such as in, uh, positive reinforcements, establishing motivation, motivating, establishing and motivating users to complete goals, and a combination of other features like clean appearance and general usability. David also helped us come up with a list of do's and don'ts pertaining to creating a system that would be both easy to use and fun to keep up with. Um, here are some of the do's and don'ts that we have gathered from his interview or inter or our interview with him it's got to be engaging it's got to be positive and or, and we plan to be engaging through these uh positive or through the um notif frequent notifications or we will tailor the frequency of said notifications um for the students uh some things that we didn't that were that we are making sure not to include or have happen is um, systems that like the duo login system that has uh, been uh, uh, widely expressed dislike for on campus. Um, so we want to have it easy. We want it to be simple so that you can scan in and or scan and simply go about your day and not have to or go about your workout or time at the rec. And not have to worry about oh did this thing work because if it's difficult no one's going to want to try and use it all right so some logistics that we uh, came across in our research is our uh, the system needs to actually benefit both parties the party of the actual students themselves and the rec because the rec still runs as a business so if one side were to have X amount of benefits over the other side, <laughs> the rec side would probably end up either losing money or something bad would happen. And some rewards that our group came up with that we discussed were like t-shirts, there's the duck store in the rec, we could have like small store discounts and possibly like other discounts for like class participation or something else. Um, we'd also have to talk with other parties about what was happening is because or like the rec or the duck store is its own store within the rec. So if we just ask them for discounts or like force them to do discounts that kind of won't work with both parties. So we're going to have to uh, figure out kind of what to do. And then there also will have to be an evaluation at the end of the term for who shows up to the actual rec center. Because if like someone shows up one time and then just doesn't show up again, that's kind of like a bad thing towards participation that, um, if you basically limited participation is not a good thing. You want the participation to keep lasting, keep lasting. And uh, one thing that my group came up with is kind of like a checklist of trial area or like area trials. So like you tried out the aquatics for one time, you get like some points for that, or you tried out one of the other places, like you took a class, you can have points for that too. And uh, we also have to pull everyone's information to for like who showed up in regards. So then we could send out invites saying like, Congratulations, you showed up this amount of times, you have this many points. And then uh, one thing that we came up with, like that I found out while doing my research was there's been no previous incentive systems at the rec to BWO. So that might actually be able to spark off something. All right, next one. All right, so I interviewed, 
I interviewed Trish Dorman, who is the Associate Director for Business Services at the REC. She is responsible for overseeing the business side of the REC. Uh, she oversees operations staff and is also responsible for marketing. So I interviewed her and I kind of discussed like where we have, where we want our project to go along with like the aspects of the project. And uh, she said that it has potential to be successful, which kind of, once we learned that, my whole group kind of got really motivated. We're like, all right, this can actually do something. And uh, she mentioned to target other like populations on campus, like people who show up one time at the beginning of the term and just never show up again. Because as I said before, like continued participation is very good for like not only the people participating, but also the rec as well. Um, you could also have checklists with new points with like little points available for trying new areas like the rock wall. Let's say you never climbed before and you went and you climbed the rock wall. You can get like little like congratulations. You might have found something that you like doing. Uh, there's we could also do drawings and raffles for like bigger ticket items like T-shirts or like percent discounts or something else. And uh, one thing that she also mentioned is a first year checklist, because I know as a freshman, uh, I really was kind of shocked by like how much stuff the rec has. So I was kind of like a little bit lost. But if you were to have like a checklist, you can be like, oh, today I'm going to go try out this area. And you cross off your checklist and you get like little rewards for that. And uh, you can go to areas within the rec to gain a sense of what they offer, which will also be really helpful to like first year freshmen or like transfer students who have like no experience with our rec at all. Okay, so after completing our research by reading articles and journals, we concluded that exercise does lead to physiological changes, which can also lead to psychological changes. And some of these areas may include like improvement in mood, uh, improvement in self-esteem, and then lower stress and anxiety levels. And this leads us to conclude that the students who do indicate these low well-being um, statuses will start to use our incentive program more, which will lead to an improvement in those psychological areas. Um, for my interview, I interviewed Kristen from the Outdoor Pursuit program and then also Rock Wall Manager. And she explained that exercise can be fun and that when she has students come in and use the Rock Wall, it's almost like an incentive to them where they're getting that workout in while having fun. Uh, now we wanna move on to uh, how we intend to reach the people. Um, how we intend to connect with our fellow U.S. students. Um, we want to uh, 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 follow the example set out before us uh, by the recent Crush COVID-19 program, um, which has gathered a wealth of students across each graduate, every graduating class. And we aim to be able to achieve that same uh, or to draw in the same population with uh, similar tactics. I was able, I was lucky enough to be able to interview um, uh, our associate uh, vice president and dean of students, uh, Chris Winters, who was one of the main organizers behind the Crush COVID program. And together we were able to uh, discuss the strategies that went into making the uh, COVID incentive program and how all of the rewards uh, that it has to offer. Um, we we uh, discussed the strategy of gamification, which is, which was difficult to expressly talk about with COVID. However, um, because it, it is, it's not, it is inappropriate to treat COVID as a game. Obviously it is not a game. It has been a terrible thing. Um, but with us, we can treat physical activity as a game. If we are able to make physical activity, getting into the rec, fun and engaging with such strategies as pitting each class against each other will be able to draw in a far larger crowd. And considering how athletically adept this university is, I'm sure a lot of heads will be able to turn up at the rec center. Um, and we, excuse me, uh, like before, some do, some we were able to discuss some do's and don'ts with uh, with uh, uh, Chris Winter about how it was never a goal to send out inane or send out useless newsletters that just promoted deals that are for the rec center that said, hey, 
come on in. We have 20% off our this product. That's not exciting to see in your inbox. Instead, we intend to have leaderboards on uh, through our program um, where you are able to see statistics of uh, points gathered from class to class. And we'll have, uh, uh, it can either go from between class to class for the competition or it can go between majors. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I'm on the wrong. Uh, we intend on uh, connecting or integrating into the already existing rec app because it's a for, uh, it is a utility that is already uh, comfortably integrated into UO and is uh, used widely by students. Um, so it would be uh, no issue at all to be able to um, code a, uh, a connecting app to be able to link to our breadcrumb system and to be able to uh, connect it with how or to connect it with registers at the UO, uh, the UO rec stores. Um, thank thank you. you so much for coming to listen to our presentation. You're muted. Thank you. Uh, our third group presentation will be the Deck Buddy program app to be proposed to physical education and recreation. Hi, are we ready? All right. Hello, my name is Emma and I'm here today with my partners, Will, Dino and Michaela. And we are also part of the Healthy Living Thrive Arc. Today, we are here to present to you our um, app proposal that we hope to present to the PE and Rec. We created an app idea called the Duck Buddy Program to help incoming freshmen with low well-being indicators to find workout buddies to get them to the rec and get them physically active. I am going to pass it off to Michaela, who's going to kick this off with some statistics and other information. Um, so according to the University of Oregon's P and Rec Business Assistant, um, he told us that about 30 to 48 percent of freshmen use the rec during 2021 and 20, excuse me, 2020 and 2021 academic year. And this is significantly lower than compared to the past years, as the average was approximately 80 percent. And when taking a look at the university's executive summary, I found that in 2018, only 48.6 of students experienced more than average stress. And this stress is a huge indicator of low well being. Um, the statistic, although it was, uh, it was found in 2018, I can only imagine how it could have increased during the pandemic. Uh, our hypothesis for the Duck Buddy program is that we think it'll be a benefit way to help influence incoming freshmen uh, by allowing them to take part in what the rec has to offer. And this app um, is supposed to get freshmen excited to come to the rec and in return, they should have higher well-being indicators. Um, okay, I will go first. Um, so I've 
um, done a lot of stuff uh, surrounding the PE aspect. I participated in several classes, including um, ultimate Frisbee, flag football, and the table tennis class. I've also joined intramural, the softball league intramural, and I'm also in ping pong club as well. And all of those like active aspects of um, the PE and like rec area have really like helped me um, get my like energy out. Um, and also the fact that there was a social interaction um, incorporated in that um, has really like helped me a lot. And I think this app that we're proposing um, will help people um, with finding the social aspect as well as the physical aspect. And my experience has been a little different. Um, I My hometown doesn't have a gym, so I was never hands-on with any gym equipment at all. So coming to the University of Oregon was a really amazing opportunity where I could use the rec and the equipment in the rec. Uh, but for me, it was always uncomfortable or kind of embarrassing trying to ask for help on how to do something or how to use equipment. And so it's always good to have a friend there to go with you. And I feel that the Deck Buddy program would be a great opportunity for others who are in the same boat as me to find someone with either um, similar skills or higher skill level that will be able to help you um, through your journey. For me, beginning of my freshman year, I would get tied down to my desk doing chemistry homework all day, every day. And I would get in this really nasty headspace. And the rec was a great place for me to break away from my bedroom. And it helped with my mental health. It helped with my physical health. And I've gotten so much stronger since I've been going. And I really want freshmen to be able to take advantage of what the PE and rec has to offer. Because I think it'll be really beneficial for their mental health and their physical health. It doesn't have to be the same experience that I had, but something that is going to get them active and make sure that they are successful when they come to the University of Oregon. Uh, I've, had a, I've had a lot of experience lifting at the rec. I've always lifted like back home and I've gone pretty consistently to the rec because it helps me um, escape from like the stressfulness of school. And a lot of the times, I, when I bring a buddy, they influence me to do different things that uh, helps my well-being as well, such as rock climbing. I was never involved in rock climbing, but when I came with my friend um, one time, he showed me rock climbing and I enjoyed it. And I feel like the Duck Buddy program can help others uh, find new experiences that'll help them with their well-being as well. So we want the Duck Buddy program to kind of work similarly to Tinder, where you can post pictures of yourself and information regarding your skill level and maybe some of your favorite exercises or even exercises that you don't like to do. Um, and this would be a great way for students to connect with one another, get out of their rooms, um, experience the rec and what it has to offer. We also wanted to be able to post educational videos through the app where you'll be able to look um, specifically at how to use the equipment and properly. Uh, we want this to be accessible to all students, although we are targeting the incoming freshmen. So I researched what benefits exercise has in general. And according to Walden University, those who exercise have less depression and anxiety and decreased levels of stress. And I feel that if we relate this to the University of Oregon, we can only assume the same. Um, Healthline has found that exercise helps boost brain health and increases motivation. It also helps people to sleep better, longer, and deeper, making them overall more productive. And lastly, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, exercise reduces pain and health risks, risks such as stroke and type two diabetes. Um, okay, so there are a few apps that are already out there that are similar to the one we are proposing right now. Um, these include 
apps they're called exercise buddy <coughs> and strava are just a few um and some of the successful aspects of these apps are they have interactive videos and tutorials on how to use equipment um they also have helpful notifications and motivation like reminders that to like help you um get active and be like okay uh go ahead and do this um they are successful because they match people together with similar fitness levels. Um, and I think we are going to try to incorporate all of those aspects in our own app that we are proposing. Um, but we're not going to copy these apps because we're trying to uh, target the college audience rather than like adults. Previously, the REC has offered events and programs for groups that are often discriminated against. In the gym, some of these events include women's fitness hours at the fitness block, the swing pool, and for climbing. This gives women a space to work out in that they can feel more comfortable and confident in. Uh, there are also programs and events and even equipment for people with disabilities so they can also get their workout in. During freshman orientation week, the REC also hosts an event called Duck Into the REC to get freshmen familiar and oriented with all the REC that has to offer. So it's not as scary the first time coming in. Um, there are lots of reasons why having a workout partner is a lot better than just individually working out like on your own. Um, it's a lot safer when lifting with heavy weights. You know, you can always like have a spotter. Um, you can always have, especially like with lifting, you can always have someone just guiding you and watching like your form, making sure like you're doing the exercise right. Um, having a partner there also like gives you a lot of moral support and um, gives like no room for giving up. You know, like when you, when you have someone next to you rather than when you're individually working out, like you're, you feel more, um, you feel like you can like give up more if you're, if you're just by yourself rather than if someone's like watching you, encouraging you. Um, and also like when you're, when you're exercising with another person, it, it gives room for like friendly competition and brings out like the best in you. Research has shown that working out with a buddy helps you stick to long-term fitness goals better. This is because if you have a workout buddy and if they're waiting for you at the gym to show up, you have more an obligation to go to the gym. Having a workout buddy also makes the workout more enjoyable. I don't know about you guys, but if I have something that I don't want to do, I don't really want to do it and I'm less likely to do it. So I know that if I had a workout buddy, then I would probably have a more enjoyable time and st stick to long-term fitness goals better. Okay, so that is our app proposal. Um, so to overview, um, we want to, um, right, we are, oh, sorry about that. Um, uh, oh, we think that the app will improve well-being um, because we are going to get people together to work together to do fitness. Um, they're going to be more motivated to exercise. It'll give people things to do. And also there will be a social outlet, which um, is very important. Thank you. Thank you. And our last group presenting is Thrive Arc's knowledge of UO wellness resources compared to first year students living on campus. Hi, everyone. Um, we are excited to present the well being resources here on campus. Uh, 
We research the relationship between ThriveArc students and UO Wellbeing resources. I'm Carly, my group members are Maya, Ty, Owen, and Spencer, and we are all freshmen in the ThriveArc. Okay, so our research question, do ThriveArc students have more knowledge of UO wellness resources than the average UO first year? And when we say average UO first year, we kind of mean like um, a student not involved in an ARC or not really um, in an intramural or just, you know, just kind of like a regular student. So we planned a survey uh, students in Earl Hall, but we couldn't do it because we didn't get the IRB contract approval in time. And IRB stands for Institutional Review Boards. And this contract basically means like um, allowing for human test subjects within research. So we came up with an alternative method of asking the Thrive ARC whether or not they knew about this specific resource, resource before the ARC. Um, and we hypothesized that due to the nature of the ARC, these students will have more exposure and knowledge of UO wellness resources than the average student. We will come to our conclusion using classroom experiences with presenters, our own research on the UO website and our future use of a student-wide survey uh, to understand the breadth of knowledge possessed by the general student population. Um, okay, so first we wanted to talk about what the Thrive Arc is, because that's what we're all a part of and what kind of inspired us to talk about well-being resources. So what an ARC is, is it uh, stands for Academic Residential Community. And it's basically where there's a group of students who all share a common interest and they all live in um, usually the same residence hall. In this case, it's Earl Hall. Um, and so the common interest for the Thrive Arc is student health and well-being. And so there's kind of three main ways that the Thrive Arc encourages that. The first way is it encourages participation and intramurals, and they're actually free to um, all the students in the Thrive Arc. And so we're um, encouraged to take one intramural per term. The next way is that uh, the Thrive Arc puts on a lot of its own events you can join, such as ice skating hikes, uh, walking groups, paddle boarding. And then uh, the last way is it includes a lot of guest speakers who talk about um, uh, different areas of well being. Usually they all. Um, work at the University of Oregon and they just uh, talk to us about their job and how it relates to the health of students at UO. Okay, so in the Thrive Arc, um, our director, Chantel, uh, she informed us of the eight dimensions of wellness, which depict the biggest areas of wellness in one's life. Um, in the Thrive Arc, we were made, uh, sorry, in the Thrive Arc, we were made aware of these eight dimensions and we're also told about the many specific resources on campus um, which aim to improve those uh those dimensions so some of the the resources we discovered uh through the arc are intramurals and produce drop for physical wellness uh greek life and clubs for social financial wellness center and ducks feeding ducks for financial wellness um, handshake and the career center for occupational wellness uh, tutoring and our geo study abroad program for intellectual well being, uh, campus ministry and yoga classes uh, for spiritual well being, the counseling center and the duck nest in the EMU for emotional well being, and finally the UO outdoor program, as well as the local Hendrix Park for environmental well being. Okay, yes, the duck nest, as Spencer said, it's um, focuses on emotional well-being. And so yeah, the first bullet point here gives a brief overview of what the duck nest purpose serves on campus. Um, they have many resources for students uh, with food insecurity, body image issues, mental health struggles, and just much more. Um, so yeah, during the fall, we had a presenter come to our class uh, presenting on one of the many resources here on campus. Her name was Dakota. And ever since she came to our class, I have been in and, in and out of the duck nest dozens of times now. Um, there are many tools such as safe sex supplies, a nighttime kit, including eye mask, earplugs, and tees. Um, those were especially helpful during the fall when Hayward was under construction. Um, they also have many books, magazines, newspaper cutouts on, on how to reach peak wellness and a tea cabinet just filled with various types of tea. Um, yeah, and during my time in the duck nest, I usually talk to the volunteers there as casual conversation because they're so friendly or I just want to do work and I listen to their lo-fi music that they have playing in the background 24-7. Or I can even go in like to the back private 
room for a little peer wellness chit chat is what they're called. And these chit chats just helped like brighten my day. And when I'm feeling especially lonely fall term when I didn't have like many friends, um, just knowing someone you uh, to talk, just knowing that you have someone to talk to um, did some a lot, a lot of good stuff for my mental health um, in the past. And so, yeah, these uh, these chit chats, the duck nest encouraged me to be involved within the duck nest um, in any way it could be. Um, at any opportunity to be involved within the duck nest, I jumped right on it. Um, they sent out applications to be uh, for opportunities to be a peer wellness uh, advocate, uh, which focus who focuses on the well being of students by creating inclusive an inclusive campus through well being techniques. Um, I applied, got the interview, and I got the position. So this term, I'm taking a class in preparation for the position, and I'm learning more about learning about more resources than ever before. So yeah, in this duck nest class, we are searching for ways that students can be more involved uh, on campus and have like an easier access to the knowledge of these resources. And it's been pretty cool taking this duck nest class and my having the arc at the same time because they really go hand in hand and they complement each other very well. Um, okay, so all I'm gonna be talking about the Financial Wellness Center um, and this actually, like it says in the name, is a focus on financial wellness. And Gilbert Rogers, the associate director of the center, came to speak to Thrive about the importance of financial wellness. We learned that a main source of stress for college students is financial stability. And the purpose of the center is to help alleviate some of this stress by providing knowledge and resources to make more informed decisions about money. None of the students of the Thrive Arc were aware of the center's existence before a representative came to speak with us. So being a part of this Thrive Arc gave us the opportunity to not only learn about the center, but also how to improve our own financial wellness. Uh, okay, next we want to talk about intramurals. As I said earlier, uh, students in the Thrive Arc are expected to compete in one intramural per term. But I think we're all eager to anyway, because we all share the common interest of health and um, it's also free for all students in the Thrive Arc. And so what intramurals are, are there uh, an opportunity for students to participate in a very variety of sports and recreational activities. These can range from team sports like ultimate and soccer and flag football to more kind of like party game type sports like cornhole and then to just more random events like um, uh, video game competitions and trivia nights. And I personally have done soccer this term and I've liked it a lot. I think it helped a lot with my uh, physical well being because I felt myself getting a lot better shape as the season progressed. And also with my social well being because I met a lot of uh, new people. Okay. Um, so. Thrive inspired me to do uh, more research on U of O's GEO program, uh, which is our study abroad program here. Um, and that was because a speaker, uh, Lisa Kalevi, I believe it was, uh, from GEO uh, came to talk to the Thrive Arc in one of our classes. Um, and then through this research, I found out about the variety of study abroad programs across all majors, um, which are hosted by the U of O, as well as the many benefits from the programs such as financial, environmental, occupational, social, et cetera, just very um, beneficial program as a whole. Uh, and though I haven't been able to utilize this resource quite yet because of COVID, um, I'm very excited to study abroad when the pandemic is over. Okay, Greek life. Greek life is part of the social dimension of wellness and provides a plethora of social outlet outlets for students on campus. Being part of Grief Life gives students the opportunity to participate in several different kinds of charitable work through the th philanthropies that the different chapters put on on campus, as well as loads of different uh, social functions that students could have the opportunity to go to. The Thrive Arc encourages us to pursue different paths that would benefit our well-being, and several of the students in the Thrive Arc wanted to further their social aspect, so they decided to go out to rush. And because of this, many of us in the Thrive Arc are part of Greek life and have enjoyed our experience greatly thus far.
the UO, out, the UO Outdoor Program. So the UO Outdoor Program is a fantastic resource offered to students that provides different kinds of outdoor gear, such as snow gear, camping gear, bikes, anything to give students a new adventure. Um, if I was not in the Thrive Arc, I personally don't think I ever would have heard of this wellness resource. Um, and this past weekend, um, the Thrive Arc students had the opportunity to go to the river with um, Chantel, and we had access to paddle boards and a whole bunch of other different water uh, sport like things. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go because I was busy, but I asked the my other classmates who were part of this, and they said they loved it a lot, and it was definitely a resource that they would take advantage of in the future. As for our results and conclusion, um, we found out that despite not being able to complete our survey as we would have liked, um, we did ask our questions to our fellow Thrive ARC and we realized that all, we wouldn't have known about these resources had we not been a part of this um, healthy living community. Um, and so we, our hypothesis was correct and Thrive students are more likely to know about resources, but further research is required um, to confirm the accuracy of this conclusion. And we hope that our future Thrive fellow Thrive Arc students will continue this project for us. And another conclusion we came to is that we need to educate the general UO population more about the resources on campus so that we can overall, like boost the overall well-being of everyone. Thank you to all of our teams. We're so thankful for you sharing your projects and the work you've done in your arcs. So I wanna open it up to questions. Folks are welcome to put it in the Q&A or they can raise their hand and we can give you an option to vocalize it. And I encourage the students, you can ask each other questions too. I have a quick question for the, the um, bee pollination pocket group. I probably said that wrong, I'm sorry. Um, but because I know Oregon is very green and there are wildflowers everywhere, and how, how many pollination pockets are there across the state and do other schools, not even just in Oregon? Yeah, how, how common is it to see this sort of thing happening across the US? Um, I'm not sure about like across the state of Oregon, but I know that it's common, at least I know Oregon State does have a pollinator pocket like campus there. It's I don't think it's like labeled the exact same, but I have looked on their page before to like see like if this is like a common thing. And Oregon State does have a program and they have, I think a campus map as well of those pollinator pockets. So it's definitely something that has been done and like, and I think is continuing to be done. And I'm, I'm sorry, I can't answer the question about across the state, but yeah, I think it is a common thing. And I know for sure that Oregon State does have one, but yeah. We have another question um, for your, the first group. Did you ever think of adding beehive boxes to the garden? Um, yeah, so that was another group in our arc. It, originally, we were gonna do that, but um, there were so many people that were interested in doing things with the bees. So we split off. So um, my group was the ones implementing a garden. And then there's other group, another group that um, made beehive boxes for carpenter bees, I believe.
Chantal, you're muted. Thank you. Sorry, I'll ask a question for the breadcrumbs group. Um, what challenges did you have to overcome while thinking about and working on your project? Some of the ones that we had to overcome were, um, I know one I personally encountered was scheduling, uh, being able to schedule interviews. Um, but it was just a matter of uh, uh, being persistent and waiting for a response. Uh, research was also difficult, um, or but uh, uh, the interview with Chris was able to get us the information that we needed. So we have a question in the chat, if you can see it. Um, it says for any group, so maybe someone from each group can answer, what is something that you learned from engaging in the research process that will change the ways in which you approach research in the future? Um, I could speak for my group. I think one thing that a lot of us learned is how important it is to engage with different groups in order to, you know, get your research done. Um, especially for us, we had to work with both UO's landscaping team and um, several of our professors to actually implement our project. Um, and it was just really interesting for us to work with so many people from all these fields um, and learn so much about things that we didn't know about bees before. Um, for our group, I would just say plan ahead, just because we didn't get that IRB contract um, signed in time for the human test subject. So definitely plan ahead and kind of make a schedule for what we're going to get done in time. Well, I can't speak for my whole group, but at least for me, I felt learned that you need to pull research from everywhere you need to pull research about what other programs have been done at the school, outside of campus. Um, you need to have a plan in place and there's just so much research that goes into it. And it's just such a broad spectrum of what you have to research. And I was not expecting all the little details that we had to look into. Um, I second that. And one thing I kind of learned too was everyone's like different. So maybe some things I've like considered like, oh, I'm this way, but just because I'm this certain way doesn't mean everyone is the same way. And that was pretty interesting for me. Tristan, did you want to share as well? Yeah. So uh, one thing that I also learned, like my uh, colleague said, a lot of the research uh, that we did is a lot of like finite details and details and research really do matter because if you miss over one small detail it can like throw your entire project that you have like off course so if I had to give advice for like I guess the next people or whatever uh, make sure you focus on your details So I have a question for the Duck Buddy program. Anyone in your group can answer. If you could go back in time and start this project fresh, what would you do differently? Um, I know for me personally, when we did our interviews, I wasn't going into it asking questions that would relate to our project. I was just kind of <laughs> just getting to know her and asking questions. So that's one thing I would do differently um, would be relating it to our project. Um, although I did find some statistics, I think it would also be interesting to either create um, a survey or something beforehand, if we obviously had the time to just create one beforehand um, to get all the information we were actually looking for. 
Um, yeah, no, similarly with the interview, I think I would think more about who I'm interviewing because I got like some cool points from the person I interviewed, but I feel like I could have found someone that was more relevant to our project. For me, I really liked how the B group presentation, they did the costs of everything and they really went into like the actual planning and the process and all of the team effort that went into that and the cost that went into that. And I feel like we could have done a little bit more of that, like how much the app would have cost and how would the app would have even been made? Like, are there programmers on campus or would we have needed to hire a third party or some more of details of how the app would have been created. I think that would have been really helpful for our project. Um, for me, I feel like I would have gained uh, better knowledge about our project and the research of it if I gained more of like um, a broader perspective of like the students here at the U of O and like um, asked people more questions like regarding the rec and like gained a lot more um, perspectives on like what everyone thinks about the rec and like the buddy system in general. I want to leave space if other people have questions. So my question for the wellness resources group is what are your goals or aspirations for this research knowing that you know you didn't really get to complete it so you have this idea what where do you where would where would you love to see it go in the future um i think i'd love to see this research continue and go more campus-wide um, so then we could get a better idea of what resources people know about about or don't know about. And in that way, we could put our focus on to, okay, we need to market this specific resource better. We need to make sure there's more engagement for this one. Um, so I think that's where we could put it in. We could possibly partner with other ARCs to improve all the wellness. unrelated to the research, but for the uh, environmental studies group, did you learn something new about well-being on campus in these presentations? Yeah, for sure. And I think also um, a lot of the resources that y'all mentioned were ones that um, we had guest speakers come in our arc too. And so um, there were like, we had, we had um, a lot of shared ones, but we also learn some from the session like the financial wellness one and like the duck nest um so I, I appreciated that but i definitely think that there's like disproportionate focus in um the arcs versus like general university for on those resources and so i'd really love to see um those resources be like peddled more I will ask one final question and then if anyone else, um, we could wrap up the session. But my final question to you all, oh no, I lost my question, um, is where do you see research going next in your life or next in your U of O experience? And that is broadly to anyone in the group that is willing to share. Um, I personally, see research as um, potential for me to test my own self-guided learning because that has been a, uh, a very obvious struggle in or very prevalent struggle in my life. Um, and I think that being able to pursue research, um, whether it be for somebody or be for a cause that is my own, um, I think it, it would be a very uh, important experience for me to be able to do m multiple times.
Um, I'm so I'm a journalism major and I'm hoping to do science communication um, in the future and like centered heavily on um, like archaeology um, would be ideal. And so I'm taking an archaeological research course in the fall. And so I'm really, really excited to like work with artifacts from a lab. I kind of have another quick question, if that's okay, for the environmental arc. What majors, what are you guys majoring in? Because I know with the Thrive Arc, we're majoring in absolutely everything that you could possibly imagine. Are you guys mostly environmental majors? Because I know, Kelby, your um, journalism, but what are, like, is it also a broad range of things for that as well? Um, well, oh. I'm a marine biologist major. Oh, sorry, Alyssa. <laughs> um, Alyssa, you can go. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of us are environmental science majors. Um, just switched to a bio major. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for, for being part of this presentation today. And I am so proud of you as first year students jumping into the research symposium. And I hope this is an experience that you continue to find ways to engage in the future, um, get involved with other faculty on campus so you can support their research or think about the, your own projects and work that you're doing and how you can um, present it here at this annual event. We will stop the recording. Stopped.